Hey everyone, Jake here from CVP. We've been creating these videos since April 2018, and a lot has changed in that time. However, one thing that has stayed pretty much constant is the camera that I've used to record my piece of cameras on, our trusty Canon C200. This, alongside the Red Gemini originally, which we replaced with the Red Komodo almost a year ago now, have been our two key cameras for producing the content we do. But unfortunately today, we'll be saying goodbye to the C200, as we will be replacing it with a new camera, which we'll be talking about at the end of the video. The C200 has served us so well, and I wanted to talk about it and what makes it such a great camera, even after being on the market for over five years now. The C200 was announced all the way back in 2017, and at the time was one of the very few options at its price point to shoot RAW internally. This made it incredibly popular for people wanting to experience shooting RAW and all the benefits that come with that, us included. We picked up our C200 just over four years ago and have shot pretty much all of my talking headpieces on that, as well as a bunch of other projects with it as well. We grabbed this camera for so many reasons, but the biggest was the fact that it can shoot great looking 4K cinema raw light footage internally directly to CFast 2.0 cards. We've not changed this camera in so long as we really haven't needed to. It served us well and the image it kicks out is still fantastic. It's got a good dynamic range, great colours and the 4K RAW is really detailed. However, one of the issues with the C200 is the lack of compressed 4210-bit options. You can record in XFABC or MP4, but both of these are limited to just 4208-bit. This footage can still look really good and we have shot pieces of cameras in the past due to card space limitations when recording longer videos, but the image quality definitely isn't as good as the RAW that the camera can record. It's a real shame that this camera still doesn't have this, as I think it would still be an incredibly popular camera now if it could. However, for those wanting to shoot XFABC 10-bit, the C70 and C300 Mark III make much more sense now and have an arguably much better sensor too. One thing that we've experienced is how much the cinema raw light out of the camera can really bog down your computer when editing. This gets very noticeable in larger projects, but for most, we would process the take through Resolve grading it and then exporting out a nice friendly to edit ProRes 42 file. If you have time, transcoding or grading and exporting your clips before hitting your main edit will result in much better performance, but obviously adds extra time to your post-production workflow. I normally bring the ISO down pretty low in post and then use a color space transform to reds gamma and gamut and then use one of their IPP2 LUTs before then adding some contrast and whatever tweaks I need to make to the color. But normally we don't really need to do too much to the image other than some minor levels and white balance adjustments depending on the mood of the image we're going for. You can only record RAW to the single CFast 2.0 card slot, which at the time was a bit of a pain as CFast 2 cards were still very expensive and thanks to the high data rates you could really get through them pretty quickly. Even with the 512GB card that we use, I've had to pop a second one in mid-record with longer videos. One thing we've really liked with the C200 is the way it renders skin tone. It's always looked really great and is something that Canon is obviously very well known for. I'm sure this is the main reason why so many people have asked us on previous videos what camera I record these pieces of cameras on. We've shot plenty of pieces of cameras using Canon's YDR profile, which when paired with a wet exposed white balance setup and the internal XFVC, it can look really good. The scenes that we normally shoot with the C200 don't really push its dynamic range, but it has excellent latitude performance as well. I filmed these videos by myself in my home office, so I also wanted a camera with reliable face tracking and autofocus, and the C200 ticked that box. I usually go between using a Canon 24-70 f2.8 Mark II and a Sigma 50mm f1.4 on the front of the camera, with the lenses normally set between f2 and f4. I don't believe I've ever had an issue with the camera losing focus on me in the hundreds of hours of video that I've recorded of myself. It's been incredibly reliable and a true testament to how fantastic Canon's autofocus is for talking heads or interview setups like this, especially for people filming by themselves. Canon has definitely improved their autofocus since this camera though, especially with the R5, but this camera still performs well in most scenarios. The body of the C200 was also a big deal at the time. The C300 Mark II was pretty good, but the monitor design was a proper pain in the ass to work with when it came to rigging and handling the camera. It was separate to the body like the C200, but used two cables to connect to the camera. The C200 changed that by introducing a monitor that can be easily repositioned and mounted using a single cable. 
They also move the XLR inputs off of the monitor and put them onto the body of the camera itself, which made it much easier and more compact when recording audio. We've used a mix of externally recording as well as going directly into the C200's XLR port for these videos, and both sound great. The mic we use for our videos is the Sennheiser MKE 600, which is usually boomed above me using my desk mounted Rode arm. I prefer recording externally as I can monitor the recording of this closer to me on my computer and have less cables running around. I use the C200's included scratch mic to clap sync the audio. While I mainly run the camera off of mains, as it pretty much lives in one position in my room, battery life on the C200 is excellent. It uses Canon's BPA battery, and a single BPA30 will last you around 2 hours, and with the 60s lasting about 4. This is awesome, and you can chuck a couple of these in a bag, and you know you're going to be able to record all day, only switching batteries once or twice. The ergonomics of the camera are also awesome, for run and gun work, it's an absolute joy to use. The side grip is great, and the camera isn't heavy by any means, but it's not so light that you get shaky looking footage when shooting handheld. Pair this with the internal NDs as well, and you've got a seriously nice camera to use, without bolting on loads of bits and bobs onto it. It also has a good range of professional inputs and outputs that we honestly didn't use too much in the configuration that we used it in, but for workflows that need it, it's great to have with a camera at this price point. It also has an SDI output, which is one of the most annoying emissions from the C70, but I guess that's why the C300 Mark III is there. So what camera are we going to be using for our headshots for our videos going forward? Well, we had really two cameras in our head to choose between, the C70 and the R5C, and we ended up landing on the R5C. There are several reasons why, but the main one is the fact that it's a hybrid camera. We wanted a camera that had the ability to be used for both stills and video, and the R5C does both excellently. It's great to have the option for shooting 8K RAW for shorter videos, and then 4K downsampled XFAVC for longer recording sessions. This camera will occasionally get used for B-roll or BTS, so having the option to use it in a lightweight configuration, with an EF to RF ND adapter, and as a stills camera, which it's excellent at, is incredibly useful. And it's also nice and small, which makes it a bit more manageable in my small home office currently than a larger camera. As the camera will be running off of main power using Canon's USB power supply, we won't need to change battery, which is one of the downsides of the R5C. However, I have a boatload of LP6 from the three Canon DSLRs that I still own. The Canon C200 has served us well, and it's still a fantastic camera, especially at its used price point. I am sad to see it go, but I'm sure the R5C will be a worthy successor to it. Let us know what you think of the Canon C200 in the comments below, and if you like the video, please give it a like, and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.